What is up, Watch fam? I am Christian, and this is Blueprinting with Theo and Harris. This is the second episode of our series where we invite watch geeks, entrepreneurs, creators, people willing to retrace their blueprint, where they are, what got them there, and where the hell they're going. So you ready? All right. Today, I have the pleasure uh, of welcoming a friend, Instagram influencer, and watch geek, uh, KickTok. Doc, you there? Yes. How are you, Christian? What's going on, buddy? Thank you for coming on Blueprinting. Thank, thanks for having me. Big, big fan of yours and always a pleasure to talk with you. So thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the numbers speak for themselves. You know, you are more than twice as influential on Instagram as I am. I mean, you've got like 96.7 thousand Instagram followers. Uh, introduce I yourself. I wouldn't say twice as influential. I, I think someone <laughs> like you has m much more uh, sway and uh, inspiration to a lot of people. However, I did start this very early on, I guess, in the uh, Instagram watch world, which I'm happy to have done. Um, influential, I think, is the wrong word. I, I think my place in all of this was just uh, a collector who didn't know all that much about horology and uh, and collecting and things of that nature. Just someone who always loved watches and had a passion for it, for the aesthetics, eventually for the mechanical movements. Um, but when I started this all, I just think that I, I happened to be lucky uh, to do it on the earlier side when there's only a few big accounts and not everybody posting pictures of their watches, which seems to be great if you ask me because it's just it's a passion um why we stare at our watches and take pictures of them well obviously we're not alone um right th this 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 format helps us feel quote unquote more sane about what we like to perseverate about and things of that nature um but it's a community and for me it's just a way to learn and interact and quite honestly it's just the greatest format for me to to learn when you don't want to sit and go to a library and read books here's it's just in your face and questions and upon questions it's it's amazing no, definitely. That, that's probably the reason. Uh, in Instagram, in my opinion, is probably the biggest tool in the watch community. Right? Instagram is probably the medium that has made that, that has made m the most people, the most like you know, watch geeks say, "Oh, this is a thing." You know what I mean? This isn't just like a thing that I like. You know, I remember when I first got into watches. You, know, you don't talk about that. It's kind of weird. No one cares. You know, but. Instagram, you know, like hashtag date just or hashtag, you know, uh, Yemma, you get like thousands of th upon thousands upon thousands of people who are equally interested. And then there are these massive experts, right? There's a community on, on Instagram. It's incredible. It, yeah, uh, the sharing format of it, um, it, the way I look at it is it's like constantly being subscribed to thousands of magazines, yeah. some of which you would never, ever see, even if you were looking for them. Um, in one you know, way, like boutique French magazines that you never would have seen yeah, otherwise. And you bump into it and you meet this guy Renee from wherever, and you from. It's just it, it really boggles the mind sometimes to see things and learn things from people across the world that you would never have the opportunity to. Um, it, there's there's ways of learning, and this just I think it makes it the easiest most. Uh, almost tactile sense to it without actually touching it that you can see everyone's passion and things that that they look for which in turn turns you on to whole different venues of movements and aesthetics and uh errors and so on and so forth errors where are you from brett errors <clears throat> errors <laughs> <laughs> yeah you heard that um originally i i'm born and raised in brooklyn um uh, I've always been in New York, uh, went to college in New York. Uh, I'm an orthodontist. You by, I went to college at Binghamton. I'm a SUNY there guy. There you go, SUNY Binghamton. Uh, yeah. Um, then then went to Columbia to do all my dental and orthodontics, uh, oh. orthodontic uh, studies. I'm an orthodontist uh, about an hour from Midtown in the suburbs of New York. 
um, and and a, and a watch collector and passion, pa- very passionate about it. So that's funny. So, so you, you grew up in Brooklyn. You know, you never know who you're running into, right? So, but naturally, you know, Brooklyn doesn't scream uh, uh, watch collector as much as Columbia does. And you, and you huh. at the time, you probably weren't a watch collector, right? But you probably ran into a lot of people without knowing it that probably <laughs> had some very very serious watch collections at the time. I mean, you know, this is creme de la creme. Well, quite, quite honestly, um, like you said, there was a very long period of my life where I didn't know what you're looking for. I wasn't collecting. I just knew I liked watches from the very, I mean, as long as I can remember, I have images in my head of my father in the 70s and 80s using a mechanical stopwatch. Um, I actually have it in my possession now because after, you know, it's, it's really come full circle. I asked my father, do you have that somewhere? And of course, he pulled it out of the garage. Yeah, so, <laughs> of course. So he, he, knew, he knew exactly German. which corner of which box it was in. Uh, yeah, here it is. And it's all corroded and awesome. And and I looked at him like, yeah, that's it, you know. Um, I, so I have that. And that's, you know, I'm, my, I'm between five and ten years old playing with the stopwatch, winding it. Asking him how it works. What are the two different hands here? Because it was a you know multi lap. It was very cool. Um, and then uh, I mean, I then I go. I'm a Jewish guy, so any major thing, my bar mitzvah. What did I ask for? I asked for a watch. Did you collect other things growing up or no? Yes. What'd you collect? I could everything. Um, Bottle caps, garbage pail kids, baseball cards, comic books. I feel like I've met I've met a lot of people, especially in watches. Actually, almost exclusively in watches, right? That like grew up like collecting things, and I I, I didn't collect anything. I didn't I didn't collect. I collected fake IDs. I think that was it. Really, it's very strange. I just read somewhere that collectors, kids that grew up collecting tend to be more and they gave a whole artsy fart intellectual intelligent and, yeah gave a whole thing because it, it it has a different you know using a different aspect of your brain and i was out trying to talk to girls yeah. and you were collecting bottle caps and magazines <laughs> and you know so i mean yeah, it, it worked right into that i mean listen it it for me like when you you know how it goes i find this as even the most introverted person when we go to these watch events is there blabbing away, having a great time. Isn't that funny? Um, because they're in their element. Um, I could tell you that me nerding out on uh, whatever it was at that time. Oh, eagles. There was a point in time I liked eagles. So I'm collecting different eagles. Ooh, uh, it, mean, like it, eagles that, like the bird? It, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah I did statues and whatever so it may funny. be. It was always something. You know, I, writing down all the different cars I liked. Whatever it may so be. Um, it. It, open, it, it would bring a discussion to other people. Whether or not they, they liked it, it would help me start talking to them about something. And I don't know, I've never had a problem with talking with people. So and, do you have like a tremendous <laughs> amount of obscure knowledge now? And genuinely, like, do, do you really just have like this odd, like, it's probably stuff that's relatively dusty, right? You don't talk it, about it on a regular basis, but you can probably well, go have, off, like, fly off with, with a lot of topics. I can fly off the handle on, yeah. it's usually science nerdy boy stuff, you know, now that I have little boys, it's like yeah. the same thing over again. Dinosaurs and solar system yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. all these things, like, I pull out nerdy facts because then, plus, not only did I do that as a child, like, my kids do and a lot of you know our friends did and maybe you did but then as I got older I continued on my nerdy path and r- continued to read things that I thought were fun now at this stage I've decided that I, I could almost say that the the watch hor- horological aspect of it all was really for me a whole new thing to learn and that's really what sparked my interest about five ten years ago and it really is so uh it's so complex, you know. I, I mean, I've talked to a lot of watch geeks, as you would imagine, and you know, I feel like any any smart watch geek knows that they know very little, right? Like every one of us that like is actually like a you know like enjoyable to be around recognizes like like you know you say. Wow, this Yemen is really interesting. This is what I know about it. But Jesus, have you talked to X Y Z? Because he's yeah. like the expert on this. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know what I'm talking about. And I feel like the watch community it lends itself to being like happy in not knowing everything. Because every because because there's so much. Whereas in college and in other academic settings, it was like embarrassing if you didn't know everything. I hated that so much growing up, man. That drove me nuts. Quite quite honestly, I think the most interesting thing for me. Was 
was how little I knew about it. Um, when I first was introduced into like the real aspect of collecting and things of that nature through Instagram, I realized that, oh, I knew that there's quartz and there's automatic. And that was the basis of my understanding. Little did I know. It, it, the, yeah, you know, in, in the course of a few years, I, what I really loved about it was it was something new to read and learn about. Right. Um, and, and, and it goes on and on. I, I, you know, I, a patient of mine stopped in with a Nomos the other day, and I had to stop him to say, hey, an unusual watch to be wearing. Yeah. Let me take a look at that. And, of course, he said, hey, flip it over, take a look. It, the rotor winds it in either direction. And I looked at him and I said, hey, we're going to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And it's like an immediate bonding thing too. Like, you know, because you have so much to talk about. Even if you never have to go beyond watches, right? Even if your relationship is confined to watches, there is so much. Gee, you know what I mean? Like, you, it, it, it's, oh my God. And the vast majority of people do not know. And it's fun because it's, think about it. Something that most people do not know about, yet most people do wear every single day. Yes. So it's really yes. one of those things to really, I, I love to be knowledgeable about. Yes, I find myself almost all the time telling myself, do not talk about watches. Do right. not talk about this. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to hold myself back. But the second that someone even gives me a whiff of verbal diarrhea, hey, what about that? And oh, and then then we're off and talking. And I find, you know, I can read faces pretty well. I find that for the most part, people are pretty interested because they don't know. And uh, quite honestly, it's pretty interesting. I, I we think right. So and everyone on one level or another, not everyone, but the vast majority of people, watch geek, not watch geek, couldn't care less, whatever. So many people have a really close, deep story or memory of a watch, right? So I know so many people that are like, oh, I don't really care about watches. Oh, wait, but you, know but my, you like old watches? My grandpa had a really old, you ever hear the brand yeah. Hamilton? And I'm like, yeah, like mm -hmm. absolutely, you know? And um, I don't know, they don't talk about it, they don't think about it, but in a weird way, because it, you know these things were and still are, you know, abnormally treasured by their owners even if you just owned right. one you know um by and large that's what you know young people and, and people as a whole that's what you remembered of someone as a material item like oh that was the thing he Absolutely. wore every day yeah he had like oh that yellow shirt was really cool but yeah, he wore I that have, once a month the watch he wore every day where he was a very um frugal uh cost conscious man and i have his daily his seiko 100 sport um, you know, not attractive, very sensible. No, but that's not the point, yeah, though. Exactly, you know, but I have it. I cleaned it up, put a new battery in it. Do I wear it? Uh, once a year, maybe, but I have it, and we'll look at it. You know, it, it's got his dog tags attached to it, and it means a lot, that's for sure. And I'm sure there's lots of people who aren't into watches that have their same, their same, you know, heirloom watch sitting there. They couldn't care less, but that, that one Absolutely. watch means a lot. That's it. Like, you know, okay, I don't really care what Hamilton is, but oh, wait, you know, Grandpa Lewis. I know that you're, you're passionate about watches, and this is something we haven't really spoken about before. I know you love watches. I know you know a lot about watches, right? But... Why? When did you start on Instagram? What year was it? Um, I believe it's going to be five years in May. Believe it or not. Why? Like, why did you start? And and how? When did you start taking it seriously? I literally started because um, my cousin wouldn't send me pictures of his kids. Um, so he said, "Just go on Instagram, and you could look at the pictures." Stop asking me to send you pictures. How about you fucking send me the photo, jerk off? Is it? Is <laughs> he said no, no. He said fuck you. You go on and <laughs> just go on Instagram. So I said fine. I relented and Little I made. Little did he know he started a monster. And, well, I, and I made one of those Instagram accounts that I hate, which I have, which is me posting all my kids. Listen, I want to see my kids. I want to see my family, but I don't want to see everybody's kids and what they ate, and that's what everybody does. So <laughs> I did it. I watch around, and then all of a sudden from doing that, I went, um, let's see what type of watches they got going on here. And I immediately went yeah. from posting pictures of my kids to, at the time... To forgetting you have kids. Yeah, to <laughs> Panerai Central and uh, this and that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, here I was looking at all this stuff going, hey, 
Daily Watch, this and that, watches of Instagram. I, and I thought to myself, yeah. and, but don't take it the wrong way. I thought to myself, I'd like to do that. Not I could do, not I can do that. I thought I'd like to do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. What are my passions? My passions at the yep. time were sneakers and watches, okay? I'll tell you right now, that's how my name evolved. Kick Talk, Kicks or Sneakers Talk. It's a playoff. TikTok, TikTok. Which also is a cool handle name, by the way. I thought it was pretty cool. It was pretty creative. At the time, it was really what I was into. And, you know, it was just watches and sneakers. And it was silly. It was watches on sneakers. Hey, look, here's my sneaker. Here's my watch. <laughs> I had a watch. You know, my goal at that time was probably have a watch for every day of the week or something of that right. nature. Um, not about what it was. Just that variety. Things that I liked. Um, I didn't care about cost. It just had to be to me. And that, I think, is still important. It's just whatever you like. Who cares? You know, I don't care what other people say. That Here's what I like. I have a brown watch or a black watch, an automatic watch or this or that, whatever. And I then it just starts to band. evolve. I don't know. Yeah, I like them all. Um, and then one day I lost one of my watches, and that was the end of it. I went into search mode, and it all went downhill from there. I started... Really? Uh, yeah, you know, and and I skipped over the part where I went from like my personal account to okay, I'm going to make a separate account where I post watches and th- and search watches and because I didn't want to have I didn't want to mix like you know my kids and I just wanted to have, look at watches and at that time you had to sign in and sign out and whatever I I just wasn't too active on either right. and then eventually I got into my head hey you know what I'm going to post in the morning I'm going to post at night for what I don't know because I like it. And I'm going to interact. And you were getting positive learn. reinforcement, right? People were liking it. You were starting a community, were making new it. friends. We were talking. I mean, it was sneakers. It was watches. I was buying stuff and looking at stuff and learning. Um, and then at some point, it became, it, it, it just became, it was, I've never bought a single like or a follower. It's not important to me. It's amazing that there's you know, a, uh, the, that the numbers have grown. I have been doing it for a long time consistently, which I think is really the key. I got in early, did it consistently. However, at a certain point, it became something that I felt I had to do, you know, one in the morning, one at night. And it was a good thing and then became overbearing. Um, but the numbers were crazy. I don't know what was going on. I can't tell you what was real and what wasn't, but the numbers were just, you know, at this certain time of Instagram, it was thousands a week, you know, it was just going. I don't, who knew, who knows? I couldn't tell you. Then they finally restructured and everybody lost a lot of followers that were ghosts or fake or whatever. My numbers didn't dip much and I just stayed consistent. And I'll tell you right now, the basis of what I do is now how I got it out of my head where it started to become a chore of like, felt like I needed to post and come up with content. And then all of a sudden I realized, this is for fun. What am What am I talking about? Right. No. This is. Po- I have. I have a post, job. Post like, this as you is like. not my job. Right. No. Post as you like. Have fun with it. Learn. Yep. And don't feel that you have any rules or constrictions or you because have you to grow, do something. You, you go to resent the whole thing anyway. Right. Because if you feel like I started, and again, because it's been five years, which in the grand scheme of things isn't very long, but to do things daily for five years is, there was a certain point in time where I felt pressured that while I'm trying to do my job, that by a certain time I'm supposed to post. Well, it took a very small amount of time to realize, what are you talking about? Do this when you want so that it's not a job, it's fun, and it'll become fun again. And quite honestly, the way I look at it now is I don't care. You know, some posts do great. Some posts do terrible. My numbers, the algorithm, all that stuff that I'm sure we'll talk about in a second have destroyed growth and things that maybe, you know, give you some satisfaction. What gives me satisfaction at the end of the day is I take a good photo that I like of a watch that I like and I post it and a few people that I know or, or, or talk with think that it's cool and we talk about it a little bit. That's good for me. That's the win. It, That's if the I win. Do, if I don't post today, it's not going to ruin my life. There was a certain point in time where you felt pressure to, hey, let's post. If you don't, you, it's whatever. Whatever it is, it is. Who cares? It's just funny that, that you have that attitude. And I, and I think that's probably one of the better attitudes, probably the best attitude to have about really almost any any uh, uh, account like this uh, because it can be just so demanding and you, it can kind of lead you to hate the medium. I look at it as a hobby. Some people look as a, at a big account as a business. I was never in this for business. 
Um, I'm, I'm a collector. I get, I really get no negative feedback on my stuff because I think that the way I represent myself and anything I do on Instagram is just being a collector, collecting. Whenever you do get a random, once in a while, odd comment, it, it's funny because I have people, before I can even say anything, I have people who just are friends of mine who will see a comment and be like, what are you talking about? I never, right. It never escalates. I never have any problems. Somebody the other day said, hey, you know, your wa this watch should be smaller. I, I, I okay. said, I, so I responded, um, you know, I'll talk to the design team, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I said, I don't know Thanks. how you expect a collector to magically change the size of a watch, but, you know, note it, right. you know. And then, then other people you. come to you, hey, he's not, he doesn't, what, what do you mean? You want a smaller, like what, what type of comment is it? It just doesn't, I find that people, there's no conflict in what I do, and I watch a lot of conflict all over the place. Yeah, but you're not, you're not like an aggressive guy. He's following you no, on Instagram for, Jesus, like three years. And you, you could see, I mean, there are people, like, you know, like when, you go, when you go out to a bar, right, you, you, it's the same thing on Instagram. You go out to a bar on a, on a Friday night, you could tell there are guys there looking for a fight. You can tell. If you bump them by accident, a fucking smile ear to ear. You know what I mean? Like they're ready. And it's the same thing on Instagram. You post something or you comment something and before you know what someone's looking for a fight. It just happens like that. That's the you know, way but it is. the best it's... attitude to have is just to be like, hey man, like I, I mean, I don't know, the watch was manufactured like forty years ago. I, you know, the guy the guy yeah. who made it's probably dead. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> like I, you know, like I, you know, no, respect. They, you know what the response is, really, quite honestly. I, I and I did put this in a separate comment to the guy. I said, Enjoy what you like. That, right. That, that's a comment. The comment is enjoy what you like. Like all um, due respect, like then big, you definitely shouldn't buy it. So this guy who just said that this watch is too big, well, I just bought a thirty-five millimeter watch. Okay. Right. I, I and and like if you think it's too big, then I definitely think you shouldn't buy it. Yeah. And you I, know? Said, so I said <laughs> definitely. I said I said something like that. It's definitely not for you then. Okay. Right. The way uh, I am, my like grandmother, the the conversation? From a very, very early age, my grandmother always said, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. And I use that rule daily on Instagram, whether it's, it's a so poll, true, though. yes or no, or it's, uh, hey, do you, it's if, amazing if I that don't people like eat, something, I won't funny. say, I, if you ask me, maybe I'll say something to the effect of my, what my opinion is, but I would never say, like, here's a picture, my comment wouldn't be, that's horse shit. That would never be that. If I don't like it, I move on. I move on. If you said to me, do I like this? I'm going to be honest with you. No, I don't really. That's not my thing. Here's what I like about it. Here's what I don't. Here's what I don't right. like about it. But right. I'm never going to say. Yeah, that's it's, dog shit. Right. It makes no say. sense. I, they, I have competing businesses. People that genuinely, you know, people that your competitors usually don't like you. I don't like most of my competitors. It is how it is, right? Um, and I and I see the and I in the way that I do business. I'm super nice. I'm, I just you know I don't I don't you know fight anyone in business. It's not worth it's not worth your time. It's not worth your energy. You know. Um, but I see some of these people that like you know being being a being a, especially in retail or being in, in you know retail or in media now on all these mediums Facebook Instagram YouTube the way you interact on a daily basis is very, very important, right? Everyone sees it. It's very open. It's out there, right? And I see so many people that are like openly nasty. Everyone knows what business they're associated with. And then they complain that they don't like they're not liked or they're not famous on a certain medium. Well, that I don't understand because it, you have to expect it. For me, the way I look at it is I never understand how you get backlash like you do for no reason in my opinion however for me i'm always surprised that i get so little backlash you know why because i don't most of the time it's it's not really too opinionated or i shouldn't say that i'm only presenting things that i like if i don't like it it's not there someone right. like you who is giving you know your opinion on basically everything of course people are going to disagree when people disagree with me it's basically saying well i didn't ask you <laughs> right. You know, right. That's why I, I have no the conflict. Yeah, you, on the other hand, are giving your I, opinions <laughs> on everything, right. and people are going to disagree. And most right. people, unfortunately, don't know how to have a normal interaction and disagree with someone in a normal way. And, and not, yeah, not leave without an argument. Okay, right. so so your Instagram kind of is, is 96 point, you know, 7,000 followers, obviously a massive, massive following. You don't look at it as a business. You look at it as fun. But whether you like it or not, it, it mean it, it it is the foundation for a business, right? Like, what is your account like worth? You ever think about that? 
come on, don't tell me you haven't you have don't tell me you haven't thought about it looking at your watch box saying I have I have I'm TikTok. I've got, you know, 97,000 followers. What is this worth? What could it do for my watch box or what could it do for my house or whatever it might be or my kid's college? And I'd be just as happy rebuilding my account from basically scratch. You've never Listen, thought about that? If, if somebody wants to give me a year of one of my kid's college tuition, two right. years of it, yeah, we'd think about it. But quite honestly, I don't think it monetizes that well. Um, I've, but people pay for accounts. Once again, I'm not, I'm not yeah, making you an offer, but the, the people pay big money for accounts. Uh, yes, of course. And I know people who have bought big accounts and... and uh, I don't know. I think there's a very thin line between between doing what I do, which is being um, honest, transparent, and growing organically through interaction and true passion of collecting and knowledge gaining versus someone who's monetizing their quote unquote feed or whatever we want to call it. Yes. Um, in within two seconds, and there's plenty of people who I'm friends with who I, I won't think of you as a bad person. You want to monetize and make some money on this? Fine. Before it disappears? Great. Um, right. But I'm not too interested in your feed, you know? Uh, right. Um, ugly, cheap watches. And now listen, whenever you see a something show up on my feed that... M- might be inexpensive or not in char- character with some of my other things. It's because I like it. Listen, I, right. I just I bought a Japanese movement uh, Chinese company watch because I thought they did the faux vintage really well, and for three hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred and fifty dollars, I was going for it. It was I a wasn't no-brainer. Doing, I wasn't jumping in on the nine thousand dollars Speedmaster. But let right. me take a look at this because it really looks like a Tudor sub to me. Let me take a look at it with, the, and I, you know what? I'm pretty happy that I, <laughs> I spent that money. The way I look at it is, is that if you're transparent with everything, then a new watch is a new watch. Um, I'm approached constantly by um, things that I would never associate myself with, and quite honestly, could I turn it into money? Maybe, but it's not what I want to do with this. This is. The way I look at it is, for me, the the big positive for me, what's come out of the social media account, is that I could make a phone call and at least say that I'm TikTok and maybe get a response or um, go in and be treated nicely. Things that someone who's just a passionate collector, maybe you don't get a couple of perks. So that's the only thing I look at it as... um, Which really is a huge value prop, though. All jokes aside, I mean, although it's not necessarily making you money, not the point. The point is that, you know, this account can open up doors to not just like, not business opportunities, just fun nights. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I got invited to to a wonderful black tie Breitling event because I knew some people through Instagram and they know my account. Isn't that just so awesome, there are, though? There's lots of things that I've been included in and been invited to, and I've met um, you know, CEOs and owners and get to rub elbows with people who are in the know, and it's really pretty amazing. Um, I might send an email that would never get responded to, but because I attach my name and a few numbers, that I get a response. It's, it's quite honestly, I mean, people have hobbies all over the place, uh, golf, uh, whatever it may be. You go out to the range every single day. No one's ever going to give you any special no. uh, privileges. No, you're just another call. I mean, quite honestly, it was just a passion right. of, I, I liked, I was, I'm not a photographer. I am self-taught. Um, it's really, again, it's just what the things that you liked as a kid. I was always the friend with the camera. We'd go on vacation. I would always distribute the photos afterwards. I'd take all the pictures. I'd make them all. I'd give them all out. I'd like to take pictures. Yeah, it was a point and shoot. But no one else would be doing it. It was me. Um, then as I got a little older, I was still doing point and shoot, but I was trying to home in on what I thought was creative and quote unquote, you know, a photographer's eye and then finally I took the plunge after doing all this for a while I did I for the first I'd say probably half of the account I did all on iPhone you know whatever it was 4s 5s um, try to be as creative as possible with a shitty iPhone um, and as I used to say in the early days, people would ask me all these questions like the, the guy was somebody. And I'd say, I'm just a schmuck with, a, with an iPhone <laughs> taking pictures of my, my watches. I'm just better with my iPhone than you and are. And then one day I said, 
Yeah, I, I'm just I'm just putting it out there. Um, and then one day I said, you know what? I I, I want to make I, I want I, I was influenced by some of the accounts who really are photographers and take great photos, and um, I I just really wanted to up the game. And I had no knowledge. I bought a a, a, a you know an entry level base model Nikon. Uh, 3300 and then I slowly added some lenses that work for what we like to do with with watch photography um, and I'm all self-taught barely watched anything on YouTube I, I kind of like trial and error um, I don't I fucking hate tripods <laughs> Wait, why? That, what a, what a, what a, like, you, you, the, the, the resentment in your, in your throat when you said that, it was like Woody Allen talking about Nazis. You know what? I, listen, I love, there's so many accounts I love. I love, love, love. And almost everyone that I love, when I talk to them or see a behind the scenes or, you know, DM them to ask them a couple questions, well, everything looks great because number one, their, their glass, their lens is amazing. And number two, everything's all set up on a tripod. Well, I don't know about you, but setting something up on a tripod and pushing a button doesn't seem too exciting to me. And looking at it and going, "Hey, that looks great. That was that was awesome." That to me yeah. is not. That's not. Ta that's not a being. I, I'm not a photographer. Do you watch? Uh, do you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yeah, I sure do. You remember when uh, when when Larry David and Rosie O'Donnell were fighting for the same girl, and then Larry David bent over and the Viagra fell out of his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the same thing. Wow, the performance was amazing. But then I realized yeah. that you're using a tripod. Like, right. oh, wait, <laughs> you're not who I thought you were. Like, that's fantastic. And then you pull back and you're like, you're like wow, you, you, you pushed a button from like 10 feet Great. away. Great, good that for you. Cool. So I, quite honestly, what I like, and this goes for everything, it's collecting, it's, um, it's perusing through everybody else's shit, um, it's taking pictures, it's winding my watches in the morning, it's a tactile sense, a, a, pal, a, a palpable feeling that I get from doing all this stuff, whether it's taking, wa taking pictures, winding up that watch in the morning, like I just said, it, it, that, that's what excites me. I want to I wanna take a picture, I want to hold it, I want to, oh, that's out of, I'll take it a hundred times until I get it the way I want. I'd rather take it like that than take it on a tripod. Um, I, I, have, I have friends who say, wait, so you mean all these watches have to be set all the time? I'm like, yes, yeah, <laughs> that's part. Yes. <laughs> that's the best part of it. Like in the morning when I pick which one I want and I take it out and we wind it up or set it or what, that's, that's, that's the best part. For me, there's something to that to that feel of winding, the, just getting it going. I, you know, it's like the morning, it's like a cup of coffee. Let's get the day going. And you have kids. Yes. So do they, I mean, do they have any idea that you like watches? I mean, I mean, you know, they, I'm sure they have some understanding, right? N not just some. I mean, I have two little boys. I have a, a almost three and an almost six-year-old. They're, they both know that I'm obsessed with watches. Um, <laughs> the almost six-year-old, um, I won't say loves watches, but is very interested in it. Um, the little guy, the almost three-year-old, loves to look at my watches. They both will make comments about what they like and what they don't like. I've had them both pick out watches for me. My six-year-old has an Instagram account. He's Kid Talk. Oh, my God. Yeah, so Kid Talk has, I mean, his, his array of watches at this stage is pretty pretty intense. However, getting them to wear it, you know, it's still a little, little bit of a challenge. The little kids don't like it too much. But they, I want them to know things. Um, there was a period in time where my older son was obsessed with looking through what I look through and telling me what he likes and what he likes he likes anything mechanical he likes anything with a you know um, an open case back a tourbillon a, anything that looks you know sophisticated I shouldn't say that tech, technological it looks you know there's more the more mechanical aspect to it the more interested he is in it which is great anything that's worth staring at anything that takes time to kind of get through yeah well, the problem is I you know he looks at anything he wants is like 200 grand so I like you tell me I, I want this dad I'm like yeah me too yeah <laughs> come on come on you're a dentist come on don't, don't be cheap give your kid what he wants I just think that that's really interesting. 
that you know me a, a 22 year old kid from jersey uh you know you you know whatever you see what i'm trying to say as arbitrary as it might as it might be as so right. not authoritarian as it might be you become a you know an important person in a community that's an amazing opportunity there, there's there's people that i've met through this that um are just unbelievably passionate and compassionate about it. And then there's other people that, that don't want to have uh, community. What I liked about collecting and having get-togethers is that you might see things that you'll never buy or never be able to see or afford or things like that. And that those people, in my mind, should be very happy to introduce you to things that you, you don't know about. Once collecting becomes anything other than that, it's not fun for me. And I found that more often than not, it's been very inclusive and uh, and and fun. And it is. And you can tell immediately. You, you know, you've probably you've been to just as many, if not probably more, watch meetups than I have. And you know, pe and people who haven't been to them, I think would be surprised. You know, I think going into my first, you know, watch meetups, you. Th think that it's going to be a really, you know, douchey, super pretentious, not so much educational, but more so braggadocious, you know, kind of experience. And don't get me wrong, those guys exist, whatever. You, you, you figure them out in two seconds and you just walk by them, you know. But really, at least in the communities that, that we roll in, and quite a few of those events have been hosted by you, um, I, I don't know, I, I've just been so surprised, you know, that, yeah, there are people that are just like, hey, like, you know, this is my, you know, long uh, you know, time zone. Check it out. Like I, I really like it. I mean, I bought it three years ago. I mean, yeah. Take a look at take a look at my big date. Yeah, I think it's really interesting for these three reasons. And I'm like, oh, that was really cool. As opposed to like the guy that says, yo, what do you have on your wrist? Oh, a date just. That's cute. Look at my longer data graph. Well, I've been, I've been at New York City events or get-togethers where I heard both of those comments, where the one person tells me. Hey, put my put put this on, put this big date on, and 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 try it out, and uh, you know, and feel how heavy it is, and I'll see you later. Well, someone else says, "Hey, how come you don't have something like that?" You know, or you know. Yeah, well, you're never gonna you're never gonna you know say that all people aren't you know jerk offs, but you know, I I I'm surprised by you know I think the proportion. You know, I I'm just you know I think that I'm 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 pretty impressed that there are people that are just you know just 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 cool dudes. More often than not, I'm blown away by people's. Um, you know, passion, and uh, th that's really the bottom line. That I I go to a lot of get-togethers, and what I usually find is that by the end of the night, I've sat with one or two people that I didn't know and talked to them more than the people that I do know. And that's when when I consider it like a, a real good night. Like I we look, we I learned something. I talked to somebody. It's 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 always a positive thing at the end of the night. And it's amazing the people that you meet too from different, you know, walks of life or really, I mean, I, I say from, you know, from one of the things that I've taken away from, you know, from Theo and Harris is, you know, on a client, you know, relation, I guess, you know, standpoint, it's like amazing in this community who you meet, you know, I'm, I'm some 22 year old kid with a website and Instagram, right? And that's reducing it, but it still is fundamentally true. And yet through watches, you can sit down with like, you know, it's amazing people that I never would have had an opportunity to sit down with otherwise. Like never. Not just because we live, you know, two hours away, but because, you know, our worlds don't overlap. You know what I mean? Like your world and my world would never have overlapped. You know, I'm not going to run into you in Cheapshead Bay. I'm not going to run into you and your orthodontist. You're not my orthodontist. You know what I mean? I think that that's just super interesting. Because of watches, you and I have talked and gotten together numerous times this year. And that's, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's... Isn't that it's great? It's funny. It's great. And you know what? It's just like anything else. People love Star Wars. People love this. People love it. You like to nerd out? This is what we like to nerd out about. I, I can't remember any time in my life saying something other than that, hey, what do you want for this gift? I want a watch. What else do I wear? I wear clothes and a watch. That's all I wear. So... It's, you know, there's, there's no other statement, no other jewelry. I don't have an earring. I don't wear a bracelet. I don't wear a necklace. I wear a watch. And it's always something that's going to be there. And, and um, it's, it, it, it is a great, it, it is a fun thing to do. My wife thinks I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> 
Uh, she says numerous times when I show her, hey, do you like this one? She goes, they all look the same to me at this point. I really don't yeah, know. Yeah, I really don't care. Um, but there's something that, you know, hey, if it makes you happy, that, you know, for me, the best part of collecting is anticipation. Um, I have this Whitnauer on the way in. Um, I like today better than when I'm going to get it tomorrow. Isn't that funny? Does that sound a little weird? Because I'm going to get it tomorrow, and no matter what, even if I love it, it's not as good as it was today, me waiting for it. And, and I think that's part of the drug. Part of the drug is that you could buy and sell stuff, and you can be happy with your collection, which I completely am right now. Of course, there's always things that you want and make believe you could have. But there, there comes to that point, you know, um, you need that little hit. That little hit is, for me, searching, 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 which has been really to no end right now because there's nothing to find. And then, hey... Something's on the way. Something's in transit. Something in transit for me is like a drug. Something in transit is great. When it gets here, I'm happy, but not as happy as what, as I was waiting for it for a couple of days. Isn't that fucking crazy? It is fucking nuts. Yeah. But that's collecting. That's what it is. And there's two collectors in the world, I, I realized, which I did not realize until I talked to somebody, a, a, an Instagram friend this year. I said to him, and he didn't realize that I was asking him, hey, do you want to temporarily trade? I'll give you this watch, give me that one. He thought I was asking him to like straight up, like let's, I'll sell you this one for that one and we'll figure out the difference. And he said to me, you know, I've never sold a single watch that I've bought. And I thought to myself, that's fucking crazy. But I completely understand that. You're only buying what you want. But for me, collecting is fluid. Collecting is... Things come in, and I when I sell things, it's never, I don't like this, or I don't want this. It's, I've had my time with this, or my, ta my taste has changed, and I appreciate it for this or that, but I, I don't wear it as much as I would like to, and I want someone else to enjoy it. And for me, if things come in and out. I, I, I always want change. I'll be completely happy. I'll sell them all. There are lots of people who would not do do that at all there's a few that will never be sold but for the most part i know that almost i'd say 90 percent of my collection could always go you know there's three or four that will never ever move but for the most part i'm i'm up i'm game let's let's move on you know i i look at it as i've i've spent time with it i've enjoyed it let someone else enjoy it let's bring something new in that's how i collect what i think is you know obviously you know i'm not as big of a collector as i am a you know a, a retailer I, I sell these things um and I think that one of the moments of clarity as that, that, that have kind of like, you know, mashed or, or reconciled my, you know, life as a collector, because I love watches, and as a retailer, is the moment that I realized owning something, even if it's just for a month or three weeks or seven hours, seven hours usually isn't enough, but, you know, t two weeks, whatever it may be, the fact that I got to own that was really cool yep you know i can't afford to keep it necessarily um and maybe if, if i could afford it maybe it wouldn't be for me maybe it wouldn't you know maybe it wouldn't have a spot in my watch box but jesus that is cool yep, i've done it like i you know and that's and that's so you know when i when you and i met recently and looked at your watch box and you brought some sick watches to the table you know that was kind of a vibe about some of them this is an amazing example this is how i came about it this is what it is this is who sold it to me all this information and and i got to wear it and i got to own it and i get to i get to wear and own it but who knows what happens that's such a cool satisfying moment i mean i have i have watches that almost all my watches have a story behind it i i i like to collect like that um I like to buy what I like, but it's even more special if there's a story behind it. There's there's no end to you know to searching and collecting, but when something means something, um, even if it's for example, I bought something recently within the last six months that was above what I feel comfortable with wearing, and that's another thing about me and collecting. I, I'm friends with a lot of people that have wear you know cars on their wrists and. For me, I even if I had the money, and maybe it's different if you do have the money, but I just don't ever feel comfortable in my own skin wearing something that's 
10 plus thousand dollars, 15 plus thousand dollars. For me, I would rather have three five thousand dollar watches than one fifteen thousand dollar watch. I don't know, that's just me because I'd be able to wear those three, and that one I might really not feel so great about wearing, whether it's other people's perception of it. And what I think is so important about you saying that is just because you know, that that's true for you, um, and and some people it's the exact opposite, and that's that's fine. The, the point is that's fine. Oh, it's fine. The social norm, the shallow Instagram thing, why would you want three five thousand dollar watch when you have one fifteen thousand dollar watch? When you're not, this is not, I'm not about keeping up with the Joneses. I'm collecting the way that I want to collect. And, and if that means that I end up with, with a massive, expensive watch collection, that's fine. But it's on my terms. You know what I mean? As opposed to being, okay, now I need one solid gold AP chronograph because someone else told me to get it. If that's the watch you want, enjoy it. But not because some jerk off told you to buy it. You know, uh, so. Exactly. I don't care about the algorithm. I don't care about the followers. What I care about is that when I want to source a vintage bracelet, I could contact a few people that I would never otherwise have any interaction with that I know by a first name basis and I could send them a note and a few days later, we're looking at things that could potentially be what I wanted. There you go. So that's it for you for this 100,000 follower account. It's about education. That's, that's, the that's whole point. really all it is. It's, it's a wonderful way to learn. And no matter what the algorithm is, it's better with Instagram than without it to, to learn and collect. 100%. People have, you know, a false point of reference of maybe the glory days of when you used to get 8,000 likes. And the point is, and I think that you get it real well, uh, it, it, just doesn't, it just does not matter. Oh, my God. The valuable accounts are still there. Don't look at the likes. Yeah. Don't look at the numbers. Go learn something. Enjoy it. And if at the end of the day you have something in your head that you didn't know about yesterday, you win. There you go. That's it. Kick talk. Thank you so much for coming on, man. My pleasure. Always a pleasure, Christian. Looking forward to seeing you again, buddy. If any of you guys out there do not follow TikTok on Instagram, I highly recommend you go do so right now. Shoot uh, shoot him a message uh, on his... Uh, sli- slide into his DMs. Always available. And tell him how much you like this episode of Blueprinting. Uh, and you can, of course, follow us along on Instagram at Theo and Harris. I will see you all tomorrow.